Yo, what's up guys? This is Don and welcome to another Cinema 4D tutorial. And uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to model a soccer slash football. Uh, if you're American, then you're going to call this a soccer ball. Uh, but since I live in the UK, everyone just calls it a football over here. Since you use it with your foot. I don't know why you guys um, call that little weird rounded thing. I don't know. The one you play American football with. I don't know why that's called a football. Because you use your hands, it doesn't make sense. Uh, but anyway, uh, enough about that. Let's just uh, get into Cinema 4D and uh, let's make this uh, ball. I'm just going to call it a ball just to uh, stop any confusion. Uh, okay, so you want to start off by inserting a plate tonic. And then the type, you want to put this as Bucky. So we kind of get the basic shape of the ball we're trying to create here. Uh, you want to hit C to make this editable and uh, you want to go to your polygon editor and basically you need to get rid of all these lines here so all these lines which are sort of cutting our polys in half we need to get rid of this and uh, I don't know why Cinema 4D does this it doesn't seem to be any good reason behind it and that the fact that uh, they look random just makes it worse uh, but hey this is just one of those uh, little things that Cinema 4D is notorious for uh, there are a lot of things which doesn't seem to make sense, but hopefully this will all be fixed in the upcoming version of uh, C4D. Uh, but anyway, to get rid of these lines here, all you need to do is to basically uh, highlight the, you know, the two halves of the poly, right click and melt. And basically you need to do this for every single poly around this shape. Um, a faster way of doing it is basically uh, selecting maybe something like this here and then as long as you select another face which is um, not next to the one you already are on then you can actually melt it that way uh, the problem comes when you try to melt the whole thing at once for example or maybe melt two shapes which are next to each other because that will end up creating uh, much bigger end guns and you do not want that uh, so I'll show you an example of what I mean by uh, an end gun uh, but uh, I'm just selecting ones which are not next to each other so right here this seems to be pretty good and uh, maybe if I go for this uh, it seems that I can't select anymore without selecting one next to the other and I'm gonna right click this and melt and you see that the Polys will still remain individual and they're not going to join up. If I try to melt ones which are next to each other, I right click and melt, they become one end gone. And this is not going to be good for the next part of the tutorial. So either do it separately or just uh, basically do each shape uh, as long as it doesn't touch the next shape next to it. Okay, so I have just finished uh, melting every single one of my polys, and uh, if you've done it right, then you should end up with something like this. So every single poly is separate, and um, we still only have one object here. Uh, because what happened to me sometimes, I ended up splitting instead of melting by accident, and that will give you more than one object. Uh, so just be careful of that. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, every single poly is on its own, and we don't have any two polys sort of joining up here. Uh, so this is great, and uh, we can now move on to the next step to actually make this more rounded. Because if you look at this, right, and uh, imagine you took this and threw it to someone's face, you're probably going to take their eye out or something, you know, since. Uh, it's got like those really sharp edges, uh, so we want to try and fix this and make it more rounded So you're gonna press Control and A to select every single polygon right click and then extrude and um, <clears throat> Put the maximum angle as 20 degrees Offset is 2 and then everything else just leave it as it is and then hit apply and uh, What that would do is basically bring this out a little bit and then this creates the sub or well, uh, like the division between each little uh, I guess like section of a, um, of a football so we end up with this and they're still very sharp and uh, dangerous and uh, basically not safe to play with so let's try and make this safer to play with uh, just imagine this is real life even though it's not uh, but anyway let's say uh, right click and matrix extrude uh, if you've never seen this tool before then uh, don't worry uh, basically what it is um, 
in a, a very basic nutshell. It's basically extrude inner and extrude in one tool. That probably doesn't make any sense, uh, but just try to use extrude inner and extrude and see what happens. And uh, basically, this tool here is like both of those put together. Uh, so, this is the settings you need for the first transform. So, uh, 0, 0, and 1 here is fine. And uh, the scale, we're going to have uh, 98, 98, and 98. And uh, the rotations, uh, this one should be defaulted to 10. So make sure you put all of these as 0. And then hit apply. And uh, what that would do is extrude out, but also shrink our selection. And uh, basically extruding is where you basically uh, offset the position of the polygon and then you also give it new sides like here and uh, extrude inner is when you shrink your selection and uh, basically what we've done here is both at once and uh, this looks slightly more rounded believe it or not it doesn't look like it but in fact it actually is uh, but this still isn't enough to make this safe to play with you could probably still kill someone with this uh, so we need to fix this so you want to hit new transform and uh, from here on this automatically updates as you change the values so the scale here I'm gonna go for 90 90 and 90 and uh, this is gonna go in uh, and shrink the selection and also extrude out and uh, thereby giving us this extra edge right here and uh, it's looking more rounded each time we do this so let's do another new transform and uh, maybe we can go for 80, 80, and 80. And uh, this doesn't seem to be too bad at all. Uh, I think we can um, increase this to like 1.5 or something just to make it stick out a little bit more. Uh, maybe if we can actually go for like 2 or something, I don't know. You just gotta choose what looks best for you. I think 2 looks fine, and then 80, 80, 80. And uh, we're gonna have a new transform another one and uh, we can almost leave this one as it is actually uh, maybe shrink down the selection to 70 70 and 70 uh, doesn't seem to be too bad at all and then maybe if we have this as 2.5 or something instead of just 2 it seems to be looking pretty decent and uh, one final one I'm gonna have 50 50 and 50 and just one this time so not too much and that uh, this seems to be fine now and uh, what you should end up with is um this basically crazy looking shape and it uh, looks a lot more rounded but uh, if you look closer you can actually still see the edges pretty well so if I, if I press shift v and uh, put gross shading lines you can see where the edges are uh, and it's not very nice of course uh, so let me go to my uh, board shading on its own and uh, this is what we have uh, and we can try fix this so right click your playtonic cinema 4d tags and then fong and uh, what this does is basically round everything off and uh, eliminate those really sharp jagged edges and uh, this is actually gonna look pretty smooth like this um, and uh, we can now move on to texturing this so let's get a material let's get it to be white but not totally white and let's get another material and let's get this to be black of course you can have whatever color you want but I'm just going for the traditional uh, black and white here uh, okay <clears throat> this is how you're gonna apply this on so put the white one on first to cover the whole thing and then you wanna click on it go to your polygon editor and uh, basically you wanna find every polygon here which is only got five sides so the majority of these have six sides as you can see right here but a few of them have five sides and there's actually a pattern uh, to this so only select the centers of this this very smallest one of the five sided pentagons uh, for example I have these three right here on this side and uh, here's another one and uh, here's another one and they just basically rotate around the whole thing uh, and make sure you don't miss any because you might end up with the with the football which doesn't look very balanced and uh, that's certainly not gonna look very good and uh, just keep in mind only select the little center segment and that's it right there and uh, seems we have the whole top part done 
and uh, we may have like three more I believe so one two uh, we have that one extra access you know set up a little bit extra and uh, that's the last one right there and uh, I don't know if you can notice the pattern but there is like a pattern going on here basically we can see five from this side sort of five from here well six including the one in the center and uh, same again from this angle and uh, basically you get the idea uh, and basically we wanna now expand this selection so if we go to selection and uh, you wanna grow selection it will select to the next you know sort of outer shell and if you press UI that will do that a lot faster for you and it does this all around the football like this and you might want to zoom in a little bit here press uh, UI again in the new UI and uh, just make sure you don't branch into the next area and uh, I think I've done it enough here so this is what we first extruded out and I'm just gonna drop the black onto there and uh, boom there you go we now have our football in Cinema 4D and uh, of course you can actually save this as your own custom object uh, you can actually just open your object browser go to file new preset library call this custom models or something and uh, simply drag and drop it into uh, into that folder and uh, basically each time you create a new you can always just double click it and there you go it's right there uh, so thank you for watching I hope you found this tutorial interesting uh, please comment below with uh, other ideas for tutorials that you'd like to see and uh, yeah I guess I'll see you guys in the next tutorial again thanks for watching I'm out peace